The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. Hey Ben, what is this thing? This is the Texas Instruments MSP430 Launchpad Microcontroller Dev Board. That sounds fancy. Yes, and on top of it, there's a booster pack. That's what TI calls it, shields. <gasps> Ooh, did you get a rare in with your booster pack? No, it's just a regular booster pack. Oh. This particular booster pack is the Boost ADS7042 that refers to the part number name of the high speed, low power ADC analog to digital converter that is on it. There's also a light sensor. So this board helps you evaluate different parts from TI. Oh, hey, I know what we can do with this. What? So my friend Roger had done a panel about how he built this light array mm -hmm. for growing plants indoors. So maybe we could make it so that you could put your plants in the window, even if it's during the winter, yeah. and you get natural sunlight, and this right. could sense how much sunlight there is and then give supplemental light only when you need it, so it's more efficient. Oh yeah, I like that idea. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Where are my dragons? Inspired designs. Oh, look, I knocked some hot glue loose. Regrettable acting. I want to live in a world with Star Wars again! Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Okay, Karen, here's how I think we should do this. So we have the booster pack here, the MSP430 here, and down here, because we can actually add our own booster pack on the mm. top and bottom, we should add a real-time clock, RTC. That way we know what time of day it is. So we can say there's a start point for actually supplementing the light and an end point. Yeah, because you want the plants to kind of sleep. Yeah, it, plants actually do need a rest period. Mm -hmm. So if the sun is not bright enough, then a supplemental light will be activated to help the plant. So how is this device going to know how much light we want? Well, the booster pack has a light sensor on it. Okay. So we basically put this whole array right next to the plant so it can detect the light. And there's an LCD and three buttons on this thing, so we can actually uh, use that to program it. We can use one button to set the default amount of light. So it was like, oh, it's a nice day out. Okay, boom, that's my target light. Okay. So if you see less than that amount of light, then turn on the supplemental lights. Okay. We can use the other two buttons to set the start and the end time. So you can push the button and cycle through the hours. Nice. Like start at 4 a.m., end at 10 p.m., and etc. So in the winter, you know, you might want to actually supplement it more because there's less light and vice versa in the summer. And then our light box, which we can get from our neighbor since he's like a plant guy, we can control that with an SSR, a solid state relay. Mm -hmm. It can be controlled by the MSP430. So our low power microcontroller can turn on an alternating current device. All right, the first thing I need to do before I can test the real-time clock is to wire up a booster pack. So booster pack is what TI calls the things that you attach to the MSP430 dev board. So this booster pack is the one they want us to demonstrate. This one has the low power analog sensor on it. So we'll get to that in a minute, but I'm going to actually make one that attaches to the bottom for the real-time clock. Now there's an extra five volt line right there. I had to add a header for it because it only had 3.3 volts originally on this. The MSP430 is a 3.3 volt device, whereas the Boeg standard DS1307 real-time clock is five volts, which is kind of weird considering you use a three volt battery to keep the time, but whatever. Uh, it shouldn't be a big deal though. We can just have different values on the I squared C line and pull it up to the 3.3 volts and should be okay. All right, so I'm gonna populate this board and then we'll wire it up to the MSP430. Basically, we need power, ground, and serial data, serial clock, since it's an I squared C device. Then we should be able to test the libraries to see if we can read the real-time clock. For a real-time clock, you usually need a battery, the real-time clock, and then a crystal. There's a certain uh, frequency of crystals around 32 kilohertz that is used for most real-time clocks. There are some systems that use 32 kilohertz as the base oscillator, therefore it can be used as a real-time clock, and then they can scale it up for the microcontroller itself. Should be able to fit everything on this board, hopefully. Oh, sure, no problem. Get down. All right, well, I'm gonna start wiring this up. I need to make my own booster pack to attach to the MSP430. I'm using a piece of perf board and attaching thin wires to it to create power and ground rails. I'll attach the DS1307 real-time clock as well as a battery. 
I had some issues with the real-time clock, uh, not resetting, but not being initialized properly when I was using Code Composer Studio. It would compile okay, but then when I removed power and turned it back on again, the RTC wouldn't work. It kept the time, but it couldn't be accessed. So I realized I had more luck using uh, Energia here. So what I did was I took most of the code from Code Composer Studio and put it into Energia. Now when you have Energia or Arduino or any of those sort of programs, they do a lot of the low level stuff for you that you don't have to think about. Like all this stuff here where it's setting the clock and the registers. You have to do that sort of thing when you're using a more you know professional tool like Code Composer Studio, but you don't have to do it normally in an Arduino environment. But that doesn't mean you can't do it. I mean, those same commands will compile in Energia or CCS Cloud. So I just copied them all over. So we have something that sets up the clock, even though that would already be set, but who cares, we'll still do it again. And we can still set up the spy bus to get the data from the ADC. Set the buttons and the lights, and here's where we set up the ADC. So this is the same code that was in CCS Cloud, and it'll still work in Energia. So they're pretty intercompatible. I probably could have got CCS Cloud to work, but I just didn't have enough time. Okay, so here is the main state of what's going on. We have a timer again, and after, I think it's like 10,000 cycles, it will draw the LCD, and the LCD has a state to it, which is down here. It's either in monitor mode, which is where it just shows the time in the bar graph, the uh, start hour mode when you're setting it, the end hour mode, or level set mode. So we draw the LCD, and then we see if there's a timer. So the timer basically, if you push a button, it'll switch the LCD state, and then after two seconds, it'll go back to the monitor mode, which is what it's doing right now. Then I'm using three of the buttons, buttons one, two, and three. This button will set the starting hour. So let's say we want the light supplemental to start at, I don't know, 5 a.m. Scroll through it. With these two buttons, you can set the start point and the end point of the light supplement. So let's say we only want it to go till 10 p.m. at night, and we want it to start at 4 a.m. in the morning. That would give the plants like four hours of rest because they do need rest. If you turn the lights on all the time, they'll actually grow faster, but not properly. So see this clock icon here? This tells us that we're in the right time period for supplementing the light. So the system's like, okay, it's uh, between the start time and the end time, but do we need more light? So that's the other question. So there's another button here, which is the level set state. If I push this, it takes the current reading from the light sensor and says that's our trigger level. So if we're during the active time and the light goes below the trigger level, you should see, see that heart show up? Okay, so that's indicating that, oh, we need more light. So right now I don't have it obviously controlling any lights, but that's telling us that we do need to control it. I think I can use this pin right here below the uh, SOMI, which is slave out master in. Yeah, see how I have it pulsing with the clock? The uh, pins on this are kind of weird. If you're using Energia, it's actually one to 10 and 11 to 20, so that's pin 13. It's kind of weird how they indicate that. It seems like everything's working. Oh, let me show you another test though. So let's say there's a lot of light and I hit the set button. Okay, so that's our new preset. So just an ambient amount of light will trigger the heart and the heart means we're gonna turn on the lights. But if there's plenty of light, see how it goes off? But yeah, I, I actually put that pretty high. So when you push the level set button, it takes the current reading and then subtracts 30 from it just to give you a little bit of a dead zone. And that's what it uses as a new trigger point. All right, it looks like everything's working. We can set the end point, the start point, and the light level. So next, I think we need to figure out a way to get this board to turn on and off the light banks. So we talked about these grow lights in a previous research section. They basically light up red and blue, the only colors plants care about. You may notice that plants are green, which means they don't react to or care about the color green. So yeah, these are basically AC. I thought about controlling them with the DC circuit, but I don't think it's really necessary. You know, the small plant samples, we might be able to get away with just one of these. So I got one of these. This is a solid state relay. These are pretty handy. They allow you to control alternating current loads with very low level logic. You simply attach your ground reference here, your DC ground reference, I should say. And then three volts to 32 volts DC will activate it. See how the light comes on? One thing I wanna check is how much current this draws. Because if it doesn't draw very much current, we can use the IO directly from the MSP430. So I've got my multimeter set to current. Let's see how much it draws. Okay, yeah, like maybe 10 milliamps. 
which is great. Uh, it varies from microcontroller to microcontroller, but 20 milliamps source or sync per pin is about what you should expect. And that's enough, you know, to light an LED, but it's not really enough to do anything else, which is why you almost always need some sort of external buffer or switching circuit. But it should be enough to turn on this relay. I'll probably still put an inline resistor just to be on the safe side. Let's rig up a test. We've got our board here. I'm getting rid of this battery pack. We don't really need it. Now I should be able to remove this <clears throat> real-time clock pack and it's still got its own battery so it will keep, you know, keep the time. So in the earlier example, we were looking at the uh, pulse on this pin and I've since programmed it to actually activate when the light is high or low. So that would be one, two, three, that pin right there. So what we can do is we can actually just attach two wires to this board and uh, connect them to the relay and that should give us relay control from the MSP430. So let me grab some wires and we'll do it. I'm going to attach the real-time clock shield to the solid state relay. Come on, there we go. Happy little clouds. All right, let's see if we can get this to work. Let's give it an artificially high light level, set it. Not getting a signal. Must be cursed. I think I found the problem. The inline 1K resistor from the GPIO is causing it not to work. Let's try it again. Set light level, level set. All right, darkness, relays on, off. You know, I should probably tweak in the code actually when it does um, the level set, it should do like some samples, then throw them away and then do 10 samples and average it. So yeah, that's something I should fix in the code. Let's test something else. Let's set the start point to 2 p.m., which is in the future and the end point to 6 p.m. Okay, so that means light or no light, it should be off because we're outside of the compensation period. It's like working overtime. Maybe we could do this. Let's turn on this light. There we go. Let's set that as a light level. Okay, now if we turn off the overhead. Cool. All right, well, it works well enough for the time being. I'll add some averaging in a little bit. So what I want to do next is test the solid state relay with an AC circuit. So let's uh, unplug this. So Felix ran and got this uh, extension cord. So I think what I'll do is, you know, you have this plug into the wall, then it'll go to a little box, and then this will go to your power strip. So whatever lighting you want, you just plug in here into the power strip. All right, let's, wow, this is pretty heavy, heavy duty. Let's cut her open. It's like cutting open a snake. Snake surprise. All right, here's an AC plug. I highlighted the uh, moldings that indicate live, neutral, and ground. So ground is just you know, earth ground. If you have a uh, AC to DC circuit, you connect earth ground to your uh, DC ground as well. So to make a switch or to disconnect something, you want to interrupt the live line, not the neutral line. If you only interrupt the neutral line, your circuit may still be live. So yes, this one doesn't have colors. See, it's just uh, shielded, but typically in AC wiring, live will be black, neutral will be white, and ground will be usually green. You know, like the earth, although it may not stay green forever. I'll wire this up and then we'll see if it interrupts the AC circuit correctly. Tell them what they've won. You want a brand new toaster. All right, I'm gonna hook this up manually using the battery pack just to make sure it works. All right, you ready? It really is that simple. So this is a, a 10 amp solid state relay. So, I mean, you could hook up something as big as a microwave, but you probably shouldn't. But things like these lights, it should be fine. Why turn on lights when we have a perfectly good fission reactor floating in space? Hashtag solar roadways. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure that's not gonna touch anything. Plug in this, plug in this. Okay, let's add some light, set that as our baseline. Oh no, the sun's burned out. It's not being PWM'd, it's either on or off. I mean, we could probably PWM the solid state relay, but it's, I don't know, I don't think it's a very good idea. So I'm gonna add a few more things to the code. I'm going to put something in that will average the sample. So when you push the level button, it'll be like sample, 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 then divide the total by the number of samples to get an average and then use that as the baseline. Uh, yeah, but it seems like everything's pretty much here. I tweaked the code. 
Now you can push this button and it takes 10 samples and averages them, tells you the average, and then that's the new reading. It also requires more of a change before it turns on. My shadow should still do it though. All right, let's try this. More than enough light. That was weird, we got a negative number. Uh, what did I do wrong? I did something wrong. So I checked my code and yes, I was using a signed integer for the average value. So when you average something, you take, in this case, 10 values, you add them all together and then you divide by 10 or the number of samples to get your average. But in this case, you know, with the light shining up to it really close, you know, you're talking like 3,900 times 10, 39,000. I don't know why I bothered to do that math with the calculator. Anyway, that's more than 32,768, which is the limit of a signed 16-bit integer. But I changed it to an unsigned long, which means it can now go to 4.2 billion, which we would never hit unless we took a lot of samples. Not even No Man's Sky has that many samples. So let's try it again. I'm gonna shine it right in its face, get samples. What's the average? Yeah, 3995, so yeah, that clearly would exceed the size of an integer. So I guess the moral of the story is if your code is not working correctly and you can't figure out why, look at how you define your variables. Some of them may not be the right size. I guess the next thing to do is to put this into a project box, which is probably gonna be a montage. I'm going to attach all of the alternating current and solid state relay things inside of this project box, and then I will attach the MSP430 to the outside of it. One end of the box will have the plug going into the wall power. The other side will have the control plug going to the grow light. Here's our MSP430 launch pad along with the booster pack that sends us light. Got a USB cable I chopped up here. Real time clock is underneath it. Down here, we have the control going to the solid state relay. The solid state relay interrupts the AC line. We have the AC line tied together here going to a small five volt AC to DC converter, which powers the uh, MSP430. And then this goes to the light. So basically you could plug in your power strip with whatever you wanna control into this. And this goes into your wall, and then you should have variable light control for whatever you plug in. Asterisk, not to exceed 10 amps. All right, uh, I think everything's good to go, so I'm just gonna stick this down and then screw it together. Okay, let's test this with everything buttoned up to make sure it still works. All right, let's get a light sample. Great. Oh no, it's getting dark. Save the plants. Let's check the time of day. Let's start it at 4 p.m., which is in the fucha from the current time. All right, so the clock icon is gone, the heart is gone, the lights won't turn on, whatever we do, because we said that we only want this to work during 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. Let's set the time backwards. Let's say it starts at 4 a.m., and then at 10 p.m., it turns off. So that gives the plants more light than you normally have during the day, but it's not 24 seven, which apparently is also bad for plants. Okay, so now we're in the active period and it works. See, doing real time clock projects is kind of difficult because what time of day we film things can have an effect on the demonstration, like when we did that pill minder project. But this one's actually pretty easy because the day of the week doesn't matter, just the time of the day. Felix and I are going to assemble a box in order to conduct this experiment. It will have two sides. One will be for the test plant. The other side will be for the control plant that won't have additional light. Gotta use a speed square to make sure everything's nice and straight. We'll put a lid on the unit and attach the glow light to it with some hanging chain and some nails to keep the chains from falling through. Doesn't have to support any weight, just has to you know, stay in place for a couple weeks. I'll also cut some holes in the back so we can lift up the flaps and easily observe the growth of the plants. I picked the two plants that look the closest to each other. I labeled them test and control one. I'm going to put our light box over this card table. Make sure they're centered and as equal as possible. It's kind of an overcast day, which is actually good. I think that's a better baseline than a sunny day. Make sure the circuit's running. Okay, it is. I'm gonna set this as the baseline light measurement. Cool. Okay, we'll do a test. I'll close the shade, that should turn the lights on. Yep, there they go. Open the shade, 
turns the lights off. Cool. We have equal amounts of light coming into this box. However, this plant is supplemented and this plant isn't. I'll place another control plant in the shop. It will get artificial light during the day when we're here. And finally, I'm going to put one in the bathroom where it is almost always dark. That's all the time we have for today. Now we can't really show much plant growth in the one week we had to film this episode, so we're going to have updates in future episodes so we can see the difference between the test plant and the three control plants. So stay tuned for that. Have you ever made any projects revolving around energy efficiency? Let us know in the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash TBHS. You can also go there to read about other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll see you next time. One, two, three. It's easy as one, two, three, A, B, C. One, That's two, great. three, A, B. Why are you? One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do a good Baby Groot impersonation, like dancing Baby Groot? One, two, three. It's easy as one, two, three. When set the Alpha Six exploded. <laughs> How does a planet just randomly explode? <laughs> Much to learn you have. <laughs> Few words, yay! You the Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com.